Shut the Box is a simple, competitive dice game that requires an expensive game box. Or does it? Let me show you how you can play this classic pub game with items you probably already have. Hi, I'm Chris and welcome to Playing Games. Please comment, like, and subscribe. Go ahead, check all the boxes. Shut the Box is a game you should know, and it's part of the Playing Games Essential Dice Game series. Object. The object of Shut the Box is to be the first player with the lowest score after one player has reached 45 or more points. Yes, in Shut the Box, points are bad. You want to avoid getting points. Like hearts, you don't want any points. Shut the Box is meant to be played with a custom game board, or in this case, a game box. They look like this, and if you must have one, I think these are all great choices and range from affordable to this. As mentioned, you can play this game with items you likely already own. Setup. Here's what you'll need. Two dice and flippable items which are numbered 1 through 9. Some versions are numbered 1 through 10 or even 1 through 12. But I think the 1 through 9 version is the most classic, so let's go with that. Do you like these cool wooden dice? They were provided by Tanawa Trading Post, who can be found on Etsy or their website, which is linked in the description below. These are great dice. I highly recommend them. And if you want to help support the channel and promote your own products, please reach out. Instead of the numbered boxes, you could swap those with dominoes, which is my preferred method. Dominoes, remember those? I like using dominoes because they make a nice slapping sound when flipped over. Playing would look like this with dominoes. I'm using pips over the zeros for the one through six and six plus pip combinations for the seven, eights, and nines. There's another inexpensive way to play shut the box and that's with playing cards. Give each player ace through nine in a suit and they're all flippable, just like the numbers on a shut the box box. So now that we have our MacGyver shut the box box, let's play. Gameplay. All players roll two dice and whoever has the highest goes first. Then you will go counterclockwise. The first player to go then rolls both dice and adds the numbers together. The first player rolled a three and a four, which is a seven. Now that player must decide which numbers to flip over. They can flip over any combination that equals seven. So they could flip over a six and a one. They could also flip over a two and a five. They could even do a one, two, and four, which equals seven as well, and so on. As a general rule, you will want to flip over the higher numbers first, as they can't be added together to make combinations. Also keep an eye on the seven, eight, and nine. You'll want to shut those as early as you can, because once all three of those are shut, you can choose to roll just one die instead of two. So I have a seven, and I will flip over a seven. So the seven is now shut, which means I can't be penalized for that number at the end of the round. So I roll again. This time I've rolled a three, which is not as good because that means I can only eliminate one of these first three cards. I could do the ace and the two, I could do the three. I'm going to do the three because I can use the ace and two to add together for the larger numbers. I don't wanna eliminate the lower numbers in the beginning because they're very valuable for adding together. I'll roll again. A six and a six, which is 12. Well, 12 is great. I can get rid of my eight because eight plus four equals 12. So these are my remaining numbers. I roll again, 11. This is also good. I can take my nine and my two and eliminate those. So now that I've eliminated the top three cards, the seven, eight, and nine, I can choose to roll just one die. And as I have a five, six, and one, the chances of rolling over a six are much higher with two dice. So I'll only roll the one die now, a three. So what do I do? There's a three showing on the die here, but I don't have a three or a combination of anything to make three. Well, that means my round is now over and I must add up these three remaining cards, the cards that have not been shut. The six, the five, and the one, and that equals 12. So my score for this round is 12. And remember, points are penalties. The lower your score, the better. And 12 is not a terrible score. You could get stuck with many more points than that. So now I pass the dice to the next player and let's see how they would play. So the next player gets to go now. They're using spades and we could have used the same suit for the next player, just set them up again, or they can have that out already like we do. So the next player rolls a four and a four, which is eight. That's great. You can eliminate the eight right away. Roll again, 10. So that could be the nine and the one. It could also be the seven and the three. Let's do the nine and the one. Roll again. Five and two is seven, perfect for them. They can eliminate the seven, which means the seven, eight, and nine are now eliminated and they can roll just one die. So they'll roll one, six. That's great, they're eliminating more and there are four numbers under six that can be eliminated. So it's a good chance to roll just one die again. Four, eliminate the four. 
So we're shutting all the numbers here. One, okay, so that's it for them. They scored five plus two plus three, which is 10. So the second player has a penalty point score of 10, and the first player has a penalty point score of 12, which means the second player is in the lead, technically, because they have a lower score at this point. Record both players' points, and reset the numbers for Shut the Box. We'll continue to play more rounds now. Ending the game. If a player gets 45 or more points, they are eliminated, or the lowest individual score if a round ends with all players scoring over 45 points. Variations. This is the standard Shut the Box game, with numbers 1 through 9. If you have a box with 1 through 12, then it plays exactly the same, but there's one new rule. And that rule is you can also multiply your roll rather than just adding the numbers together. Meaning the 6 and 3 could be 9 points if you add them together, or if you multiply them together, it could be 18. How do you play the 1 through 12 version of Shut the Box if you have playing cards? The pips only go up to 10. Well, if you own Skippo, one of the best packaged card games around, then you can use the numbers 1 through 12 to make the game clearer. And if you want to learn how to play a Skippo, check out this video. Final thoughts. Now, if you really love this game, go ahead, buy the box. I'm not going to lie, I kind of want one myself. But before you add more items to your ever-growing gaming cabinet, play practice rounds the way I showed you first and see if you really want the box or not. And if you own a bar, get some games like this. Bar culture in America has a lot to learn from the social gathering spots that are British and Irish pubs. And that's Shut the Box. Please give it a try. I think you'll enjoy the mix of competition, chance, and the satisfaction of flipping things over. Please like, comment, and subscribe to help this channel grow. Also help support the hard work that goes into these videos by digitally donating. You are great. See you next time on Playing Games.